In this video, I want to talk about Newton's first law. And I recommend learning about Newton's second law first. And so if we've already done that, we have an idea about um, how Newton's second law works. And so now let's take a look at Newton's first law. The, the punchline of Newton's first law is that Newton's laws are only valid when measured in an inertial reference frame. So all of our work we did to, to learn Newton's second law, so Newton's laws, only valid in inertial reference frame. Frame. And <laughs> if I use reference frame a lot, I'll, I'll sometimes uh, just write R uh, dot f dot just so I don't have to keep writing reference frame over and over. Now a reasonably uh, intelligent student when first encountered with that statement um, is perfectly justified in thinking what on earth does that mean? So let's talk a little bit about uh, reference frames. When we say reference frames, so reference frame, what we really mean by that in the language that I've been using so far is some coordinate system that we are using to make quantitative measurements. So, I mean, for example, back to our ball falling, fine. But if we wanted to make a quantitative measurement for that, for what that meant, well, we had to establish a coordinate system. We say up is some positive x-axis. We said zero was on the ground. If this uh, was released at some, some height h above the ground, we were then able to uh, write a quantitative description of that motion which was h minus one-half gt squared. I've released it from rest. And, and this sort of quantitative description predi was, was uh, uh, predicated on this coordinate system. So this coordinate system allowed us to make this measurement. So this coordinate system is the reference frame in which this measurement is being made and that we observe that this uh, particle follows this trajectory in this reference frame. So let, let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So, so now we have, um, we have person traveling in our car. And so here's the, the person. And now they're going to throw the ball up and it comes right back down in their hand. And, and that happens, of course, even if uh, neglecting air resistance. So we'll, we'll put a box on our car so we don't have to worry about any air resistance disturbing the, the motion. And so our car, say, was moving forward with some velocity now in the in if i'm if this person is measuring it in their reference frame they might establish a zero where they release the ball a positive y axis that goes up and this reference frame or coordinate system is now moving with the car in this uh coordinate system or reference frame this ball has a trajectory and that trajectory is some initial y component of the velocity whatever was released when the person threw it up and then it has a uh, and it started at at x is equal to zero and there is the free fall acceleration as a function of time, and this motion is now entirely in the y-axis, and this quadratic eventually brings it back down to when the person catches it with the velocity in the negative direction when it was released. And so this is the trajectory of this particle measured in this coordinate system, or this reference frame, that's moving with the car. 
but I could choose a different reference frame. So I could choose a uh, reference frame that's at rest relative to the ground. So this is my plus x axis and plus y axis for this reference frame. So in this reference frame now, what is the motion, the trajectory of that particle? Well first it started at some y, uh, say some y initial. It also started at some x initial relative to my origin of this new coordinate system. It also has, this ball has some velocity, x component of the velocity that, um, uh, that it maintains. In fact, there's no acceleration in the x direction. It's still y. This is free fall motion. But relative to my earthbound coordinate system, it had an x component of the velocity. So the trajectory in this frame is some uh, initial x position plus its uh, x component of the velocity t, and that's in the, the x component of its trajectory, plus the, the y component of its trajectory, it starts at some non-zero value of y in this coordinate system, and it has some initial, the initial y of its velocity, and then minus the free fall acceleration. And so while in, and so this now is the trajectory measured in in the green reference frame or the green coordinate system and so we get a different mathematical trajectory depending on the coordinate system and the reference frame that we use and so in this reference frame we simply see the ball go up and go down in the green reference frame we see the ball follow this trajectory because relative to the ground we see the ball moving with the cart. And so that's just sort of an example to to get in your mind the idea of what we mean by reference frames. A reference frame is really just a coordinate system in which we make our measurements. It is within that coordinate system that we establish the mathematical description of our trajectory. And that mathematical description of our trajectory depends on how we define our reference frame, which is our coordinate system. Okay, so with with that knowledge of reference frame uh, with us, we can now um, uh, remind ourselves of the, the key, the punchline, which is the Newton's laws are only valid in an inertial reference frame. Well, how do you know? if your inertial frame, if your reference frame is inertial. What is that? And that is the nature of Newton's first law. It defines what an inertial reference frame is. All right, so a way, again, I'll put this, you can write this many different ways, and I'm going to write Newton's first law in a way that illustrates this most directly. An object with zero net force will have a zero acceleration measured in an inertial reference frame. So this tells you whether or not you have inertial reference frame. This becomes a definition of an inertial reference frame. And I understand Newton's first laws commonly talks about object in motion will continue in motion or stay at rest and all this other stuff. And for the most part, I, I find that that 
just kind of hides what's important about Newton's first law, which is Newton's first law defines what an inertial reference frame is, which is important because Newton's laws are only valid in an inertial reference frame. And what an inertial reference frame is, is it's a frame such that if you have an object with zero net force, it will have a zero acceleration measured in that frame. Okay, so how do you go about doing that? <laughs> um, now I, what I'll say is a full understanding of Newton's first law, exactly how you go about measuring that and determining that, is uh, subtle and can take a lot of time to, to fully get it. And the payoff for spending that time um, isn't very high. And so I think I'll save a full expansion of the subtleties of Newton's first law for a different video. Um, but at the moment, I'm going to give you a really big hint. And the hint is this. Uh, your reference frame, so which is your coordinate system that you're using, that you're setting up to solve your problem, okay? Your reference frame is probably... <laughs> A very, very rigorous definition here is probably inertial if it is not obviously accelerating. This is pretty much all you need to know to to solve all the problems in this course. If your coordinate system is not obviously accelerating, then you probably have an inertial reference frame. And what do I mean by obviously accelerating? So again, so we had here's our our elevator and here's Bob in our elevator and Here's Alice, who's uh, fixed relative to the Earth. And so Bob is measuring things in a coordinate system. Alice is measuring things in a different coordinate system. This coordinate system is fixed to the elevator. If the elevator is accelerating relative here to the Earth, then this coordinate system is obvious, the coordinate system fixed relative to the elevator is obviously accelerating, and so that's not an inertial reference frame. So also, if I have, say, a disk that's spinning at some angular uh, velocity omega, I have some coordinate system fixed to the edge of the disk that is rotating with the disk, well, even at, at constant angular velocity, a rotation is an acceleration. So if your coordinate system is rotating, then it is also obviously accelerating and not um, uh, inertial. Whereas, say, a coordinate system fixed to the ground uh, is not obviously accelerating, it's probably a good reference frame in which to make measurements. So if, if I were to be a little more specific about our model, it, in our, when we were looking at trajectories and other things relative to the Earth, we were assuming, assuming that the Earth is flat and not rotating. So in our flat Earth, not rotating model, uh, any reference frame fixed to the Earth is inertial. Now you know the Earth in fact is rotating and you can then find problems where that's important. But as long as you can assume a flat Earth and assume that, you're, that the Earth is not rotating, if that's a good approximation, then any uh, reference frame fixed to the Earth can be considered inertial. Also, then, under those same conditions, any reference frame moving at constant speed or vo velocity, any re reference frame moving at constant velocity is also inertial.
All right, so that's going to get us most of the way. Um, we can assume a flat Earth. We don't have to consider the rotation of the Earth. Pretty much any reference frame and coordinate system that we use then is going to be fine. Um, and then we'll leave the subtleties for, for later. I, I will say uh, one more sort of important thing that, that falls under this category, which is uh, people, you and I, we, often live and experience non-inertial reference frames. Let me, let, let, let me put that down. We often experience non-inertial reference frames. And when we experience non-inertial reference frames, which I when by that I mean we are in an object that's accelerating, we are in an object that's rotating or speeding up or slowing down. When we experience non-inertial reference frames, we experience sort of non-Newtonian physics, right? Newton's laws does not does not. Uh, it, N Newton's laws does not hold in a non-inertial reference frame. So when we experience a non-inertial reference frame, what we measure does not correspond to Newton's laws. And if we don't recognize that, and for most of our lives up till this point we haven't recognized that, what that does is it builds a non-Newtonian intuition. intuition. So we, we really have to be careful about that. This is one of those times where as we've gone through lives we've been building up a non-Newtonian intuition and some of that has come about from our experiences in non-inertial reference frames. So let me give you uh, a couple examples. So here's our car and we're sitting in the car and we have experienced that if the car stops quickly, someone slams on the brakes. What do we, f what do we experience? We experience a large acceleration forward relative to the car. We are thrown forward in the car. So what, what happened there? was there, there was no, if we look at uh, the forces, there was no force that was pushing us forward. There wasn't. So despite some force, despite the absence of a force pushing us forward, we experienced a large acceleration throwing us forward in the car. That is non-Newtonian. And it happened because our reference frame at that time which was in the car, was accelerating. What happens when we look at that from an inertial reference frame, something that's uh, fixed relative to the Earth? Well, from that reference frame, what we saw was that there was a large frictional force of the ground on the car, which is, de which is causing a large acceleration in in my coordinate system here which would be in the negative x direction and that slows the car the ground is not in contact with us so the ground did not uh, exert a frictional force on us just the car which means we did not have that large negative acceleration what did that mean well that means that while the car is slowing down we are not and so we still have a large velocity which moves us forward in the car until we hit some component of the car. And then when we hit some component of the car, there's a normal force of the car on us which gives us a negative acceleration. So why we feel we're thrown forward in the car that's not what happens. That's just an experience in a non-inertial reference frame. What's really happening is the car is slowing, and at first we are not. So we move forward in the car uh, because our velocity is fast, faster 
than the car's velocity because it's decelerating. And that continues until we hit some we hit something that gives us a force which gives us a, an, a, an acceleration which matches that of the car. It doesn't even have to match, but that slows us down as well. Okay, so another example is the, the sharp turn. So imagine a car that turns sharply And what we experience in that case is being thrown to the outer edge of the car. We feel some sort of acceleration to the, to the uh, outer wall of the car. However, there's no force that throws us to the outer edge of the car. So that's a non-Newtonian -New uh, uh, dynamic. And so the problem is the car is rotating and we are experiencing this in a non-inertial reference frame. If we look in an inertial reference frame fixed relative to the ground, what we see is there's a, there's a frictional force of the ground on the car which is changing the direction of the car. However, that frictional force from the ground is not on you. So you continue to go straight. In fact, you will continue to go straight until you hit some part of the car, which will give you a contact force that changes the direction of your velocity. And so while in the inertial reference frame, the Newton's laws makes perfect sense, you're simply going straight until the outer edge of the car hits you and starts changing the direction of the velocity. In your frame, you see yourself thrown to the, to the um, outer edge of the car. And so that intuition comes from simply experiencing that in a non-inertial reference frame. All right. So that's that's part of simply building your newtonian intuition what the newtons for the the important thing to recognize is when we talk about inertial talk about reference frames we simply mean a coordinate system in in which we are making measurements and the measurements we make the trajectories etc depend on those uh coordinate systems uh, newton's laws only hold in an inertial reference frame and as long as your inertial reference frame is not obviously accelerating, you probably have a good inertial reference frame. However, you go, understand that many of the experiences you've had in life through accelerating cars or rotating objects have, have, led, you, have led you to non-Newtonian experiences, and you want to make sure that you understand them in the Newtonian framework as well.